Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the best trading methods to use when you're starting FIFA 22. Basically, how to trade at the beginning of FIFA 22 Ultimate Team when we get on the game in a few days. Because the most difficult time period of starting your account and the most difficult period of trading in this game is the first 100,000 coins. Getting off the ground from 0 coins to 10k to 50k up to 100k plus, that's the most difficult. Most difficult, And it basically just means you have to grind a little bit. Now, of course, you can get lucky with a pack pull, sell a player, and then have coins instantly. But for a lot of us, we're not going to make much from our welcome backpacks. We're not going to make much from the SBCs. So we're going to have to grind the trades. And that is what I want to take you through today. Today, how you can make coins in that starter period. So we're going to be using FIFA 21 today and talking around stuff that worked in FIFA 21 because that is also stuff that's going to work in FIFA 22. But there's also going to be a little bit of a twist to it because we know how the market might be a little bit different this year. And I want to talk through some of those things as well. But one of the three methods I want to talk about today is trading with SBC solutions. This is the number one way that I made coins last year at the beginning of the game. Because again, what a lot of people, what I will be doing at the start of the game is going and doing these SBCs. But we can make profit off of people that are a little bit lazy, and I'm, I'm one of these people. I go to Footbin to find solutions. So let's say I'm doing the Hybrid Leagues SBC. I'm doing the whole nine yards SBC inside of that set, and I want to see what the cheapest squad is, right? A lot of people do this. You guys do this, right? You go in here to these squads, click one at the top, and say, all right, these are the players that I'm going to buy to finish this SBC off for cheap, right? So a lot of people do this as well. And what happens is since these players are quote unquote the cheapest and since this these that squad that I just clicked on was towards the top and it's showing as one of the cheapest right now on PS4, what actually happens is these prices lag behind. People are going and doing this SBC. Everybody are, is going and buying and copying these players to use for their squad building challenge. But what happens is Footbin doesn't up these, update these cards in real time. It takes them a few minutes. So what you'll see is it says that this Bustinza guy, like I traded with this card last year, this non-rare gold Bustinza center back. I would buy him for 700 coins and literally an hour later, he would be selling for 1500. It would be that easy. He would fluctuate like every couple of hours just because of this squad and how it would get cheap and then get expensive because everybody would start using it as they started the game and we're doing SBC. So it's kind of like a natural a natural fluctuation based off of how many people are using these squad building solutions on Footbin. So right, it's by nations, but this specific SBC is the whole nine yards SBC, it is by nation. So what I would often do is, I would look through here for a couple certain squads. Obviously you see that a lot of these are Spanish based. They don't have all the same players in them, like this one has Diego Guerrente, um, and I think Angelina was different from the first squad that we looked at. But basically what you're going to find is it's, it goes by, especially for this SBC, it goes by nations, right? So I would trade with Portugal players and Spanish players. And one hour, the Portugal players would be more expensive. The next hour, the Spanish players would be more expensive. And then I would go buy the Portugal players when they were low and sell them when they went back up in the next couple hours. Because again, it's just natural fluctuation where people are doing this SBC and the prices move around. So if you time it right, which is actually once you get the hang of it, it is really easy. You find the, the great cards to do it with because a lot of these cards will show up in multiple solutions. And if you find a lot of solutions at the start of the game of FIFA 22 that have the same guy in it, especially center backs, right backs, right mids, left mids, depending on the nation and what the rare positions are, you can make a lot of coins. So just to give you an example of that, again, uh, I don't see a Portugal squad in here. I might be a bit off on this one. This one's got, okay, loyalty. We want to stay away from ones that require loyalty because people will see those and they won't want to be a part of them either. So stay away from those that do require loyalty. How about this one? This one's got some Argentines in here. Funes Mori, I traded with that card at the beginning of FIFA 21 as well as an Argentine card. I traded with a lot of center backs and a lot of right mid, left mids because it also depends on the position that are in the positions and the actual formation of the SBC. So if that makes sense, that is trading method number one, trading with the SBC solutions, right? Finding the ones that are not the most expensive on Footbin and actually looking on the market. And you can do some easy comparison of the prices. Like right now, these squads that are at the top, these Spanish cards, the Bustenza might actually be 1.2 to 1.3K at the start when it says he's 900 coins, 
but people are thinking he's 900 coins, but he's actually more than that, but they're just blindly following the solution because it is the quote unquote cheapest. So again, that's how that method works. I made a lot of coins from that last year. You can even look at other SBCs, not just hybrid leagues, not just hybrid nations. You can look at some of the beginning SBCs as well. People will come use Footbin for all of these SBCs. So that's a no brainer. Number one trading method for me is SBC solution trading with gold, rares, non-rares, and silvers. That's number one. Now, number two, we're also going to be talking about gold, rares, non-rares, and silvers, but with sniping filters. And these are some of the most popular sniping filters from last year. Shout out to my boy, B-Walds. He found a lot of these last year and tweeted them out and put them all into one place. Now, this year, I want to help you guys find your very own sniping filters. It's going to be very, very easy to do. All you have to do is is go onto the transfer market and you'll kind of get a grasp and you'll kind of get, I guess, an awareness for what cards are a bit more expensive than others. You can sort by league or you can sort by nation, but basically all you have to do is sort through some of these top nine nations. Like let's say France will go position, Mm, let's go French center backs and let's go, let's go gold, French gold center backs. How much are these right now on the FIFA 21 market? 500 coins for one card, but you might say that at the start, of FIFA 22 because of the SBCs, the cheapest French gold center back might be 1500 coins. But a lot of people that are opening packs with you know EA Play, whether they have, they have FIFA points or whether they are opening packs from SBCs that they're doing, they're gonna list their players up and they might not know that that card actually sells for 1500 and they might list it up for 700 and boom. That is what we call a sniping filter where you can sit here and you can bid or snipe on cards that are inflated because of demand for SBCs. I think a lot of German strikers are really good for this. German gold and silver German strikers and gold German strikers was a really good filter last year. Same thing with the Argentinian right backs. So again, you can use this list as like a starting idea for where to look at the beginning of FIFA 22. This list will be great again, but there's gonna be other ones that pop up depending on if they change the SBCs at all or if they, uh, you know, just the pack weight of these cards changes as well. And of course, we've had player that have, players that have changed clubs, changed nations potentially too. And that's going to mean there's different players under each, you know, nation and position this year than there were last year. So what is uh, a good sniping filter will be different this year than last year. You can also get on bids for these cards. It's very competitive. A lot of people like these sniping filters, but if you have quick fingers, especially with like a mouse or a touchpad and your keyboard on the web app, sniping can be very, very, very effective with this method with silvers and golds, not just golds. You can do it with silvers as well because you're going to find some silvers that are just more expensive than others, right? Some, uh, some silvers are just rare, but people follow SBC solutions, especially if it's a top nine nation or a top five league. Um, and they just buy the card no matter what the price is. So that's one way you can trade on the low tier as well. Now, let me move up to the third. The third method that we're going to talk about today is well, it's actually a combination of two, position change and chemistry style trading. Now, of course, when the full database is out, which should be very soon, hopefully, what you're gonna be able to do is look through the entire database and look through a lot of cards that are um, gonna be used in multiple different positions and will be needing chemistry styles. Now, obviously, when you're chemistry style trading, the most popular ones to trade with are the Hunter and the Shadow chemistry style, but the engine chemistry style has become so popular in the past year, I think that the engine chemistry style might be one you can trade with as well. Now, how does this work? If we're talking chemistry styles, right? Let's look at, and Dombele was a card last year that I traded with with chemistry styles all the time. Now, Dombele on his own, on the market, the cheapest and Dombele is 2,000 coins. This is just an example, by the way. I traded with this card at the beginning of FIFA 21. He was like nine to 10,000 coins. Now, how much is Ndombele if we add a shadow chemistry style on him or maybe a hunter? Let's say if you're gonna play him as a midfielder, you'd maybe go with a shadow. As a cam, you'd maybe go with a hunter. Now, right now, this is usually not how it is in the game, but Ndombele with a shadow is literally not even on the market. Okay, okay. It's only his Tots card and his inform that's on the market. Most people are probably using hunters. So. Let's look at Hunters on Ndombele. He was 2,000 coins all by himself, and this market is so rare in FIFA 21 that it doesn't show up. So that's a great example, but what you're looking for is like Ndombele sells for 2,000 coins, and you wanna find a midfielder to put a shadow or a hunter on, an attacker to put a hunter on, or a defender to put a shadow chemistry style on. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna see, okay, 
does this card sell for more with that chemistry style applied to it? And there's a couple things you can do with this. Some people will say, oh, and Dombele's 2,000 coins, but they've already put a shadow chemistry style on the card or a hunter chemistry style on the card because they've used it in their team and they're just selling it and they're forgetting that the chemistry style makes that card worth more. So, and Dombele might sell for 3,000 coins with a hunter, right? But he's selling for 2,000 coins without one. That person sees and Dombele is 2,000. They list their one up with a hunter on it for 2000 you can buy that and then resell it for 3000 it is that easy so you can snipe some of these cards you can bid on some of these cards but it's all about finding a couple players get yourself a list nine golden was one that worked really great last year i had a friend chris rm22 that was all about this nine golden card he was the one that found him this guy was a gold mine as a center defensive mid you could position change him as well that's the other side of the coin you can tr trade with the chemistry styles or the position changes like this i believe this a nine golden card comes as a center attacking mid but as you can see a lot of people for squad building links for in their formation they're probably going to move him to a center mid or to a cdm he might sell for a couple extra thousand coins with that position change card applied so again that's what you're going to be looking for now of course you want to make sure that these cards sell right sissoko was another one that i traded with he was like 20k at the beginning of the game last year I don't know how many coins he is right now. It's irrelevant because it's the end of the year. But as you can see, people like to use a shadow chemistry style on the Sissoko card. So if you find an item, I think midfielders are some of the best to do this with. Just some early shouts that I would put out there would be Emre Chan. I think Emre Chan with a shadow would be what most people would use, maybe an engine. But also Emre Chan position change to a center defensive mid could be a good one. Uh, Rodrigo DePaul could be another one as well as a shadow or an engine. Uh, card you could trade with chemistry style wise at the beginning of the game lucas paqueta as a shadow card i think 100 percent you're throwing a shadow on this but the links to league one people might use him in a starter team beside like renato sanchez or awar right so i would look at a card like this and then even some of your other attacking players and defending players you can use diogo jota with a hunter chemistry style i think would be a really a good card to trade with at the beginning reese james with a shadow chemistry style would be a really good one. Sergio Regulon with a shadow chemistry style would be a great one to trade with early on as well. So for position change trading, look for the midfielders. For chemistry style trading, you can look for any, any certain position. Chemistry styles like the shadows, the hunters, the engines. Find a player that just sells for more with those chemistry styles uh, uh, attached to the card and boom, you have something that works. But I think the midfielders work the best because they have center attacking mid, center mid, and center defensive mid, and depending on somebody's formation, they might need that player for chemistry reasons at any of those three spots. So that's why I love midfielders, and specifically like that nine golden card and the Ndombele card the most, these cards were center attacking mid base cards, but most people played them as center mids. So that would be one thing that I would keep in mind and watch out for right away is that a lot of these cards, especially if they have a center attacking mid base item, um, a lot of people like to use them as center mids and center defensive mids. So they have to go buy those position change cards or buy the card off the market with that item already applied. So those are methods that I would use at the beginning of FIFA 22 to make coins. Again, I know we talk about this stuff every year and some of you guys might even think of this and be like, man, I already know I was gonna trade with a lot of this stuff this year, but it is a very good reminder of the basics of trading. And again, the number one thing I will say is you just have to put the time in, you have to grind, you have to be on the market. That's how you're going to make the coins. Make use of the companion app, make use of the web app. You don't always have to be on the game to do this, you can do this on the web app and companion app very easily. But those are some ways you can grind and make coins again at the beginning. Now, real quick, I do want to make one little caveat to this because FIFA 22 is, of course, different. And we've been talking about preview packs a lot. But I think as we talked about those silvers and those golds that you can fluctuate and trade with, I think every day as people open their preview packs, a lot of people open their preview packs at the content drop at 6 p.m. UK time or 1 p.m. Eastern time, which is my time zone, whatever the content drop time is for you, I think what you're going to see most days, especially early on, 
is people opening their preview packs and that's going to put some supply on the market for people that pack something decent they buy the pack with coins or fiva points and sell those players on the market to get coins I think you're going to see an influx of supply almost every single day around the content drop. And I think that could be a very specific and a very important time where you just trade cards every day, buying them when they get cheap with the supply, especially if they're needed for SBCs, buying around that content drop time period and then waiting to sell into the evening as their price go back goes back up as they become more rare. So that will be only for the cards that are necessarily um, SBC fodder needed for those beginning type squad building challenges. Technically, you could also do it with some of the meta items. Like I, me I mentioned some of those players like Ndombele or Awar, if they get supplied, but they're still in demand for starter squads, you still might see them rebound back up from that little bit of supply. So that would be one thing that I would really, really, really get used to doing this year because those fluctuations with supply and with preview packs are going to be a big way that you can trade in the early game and throughout this entirety of FIFA 22 as well. I wanted to mention that a little bit earlier, but I couldn't end the video without talking about that because again, I think it's going to have a huge impact on the market this year, and it is going to be a good way to read the market and make some coins. So if this video helped you at all, make sure you smash a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions, and of course, subscribe if you're new. It has been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.